Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Nehemiah chapter 8, and we're going to be uh, continuing here in verse 17 and uh, until the end of the chapter. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we continue on here, remember verses uh, uh, 13 to 18 deal with the Feast of Tabernacles. In verse 13 is the second day of the seventh month, and the heads of the fathers and the priests, they get together with Ezra, and they want Ezra to teach them the law so that they can go out and teach their people the law. And then as they're reading that day, uh, in verse 14, it says, and they found written in the law, uh, which which the Lord had commanded Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths. So the feast of so as as Ezra is teaching these people the law, they come across this portion of scripture that deals with the feast of tabernacles. So the people there probably say, "Well, this is the seventh month. Let's observe it. If being this is the seventh month, we're going to observe the feast of tabernacles." In its proper time. So now in verse 15, they tell them they have to go out and gather, you know, these branches from these trees and bring them into the city and build booths and to dwell in them. And, you know, what's interesting in this portion of scripture here is that a number of lessons ago, I said that the seventh month which is Tisri, the, the, the seventh month of the Jewish calendar is the most important month. And because it has three, it has three uh, important dates uh, attached to it. The first day of the month is the Feast of Trumpets. And that's the calling together of the people to uh, repent to God and to man. Then the 10th day of the month is the day of atonement and where sins are forgiven. And then the, uh, the, uh, 15th of the month, uh, the 15th to the 21st is the feast of tabernacles. But what's interesting here is that, uh, that it's that the day of atonement is on the, which is the 10th of the seventh month. This day of atonement is not mentioned at all. It's not mentioned at all here as being observed. And it just seems interesting. You know, with all of their excitement about the law, it doesn't seem that they would overlook the most important day on the Jewish calendar. The Day of Atonement was the most important day of the whole Jewish calendar because it meant forgiveness of sins. And why this isn't mentioned, nobody seems to know. Nobody knows why. But it seems like they observed the Feast of Trumpets. They observed the Feast of Tabernacles. But in between, on the 10th day of the month, they just go right by <laughs> the uh, Day of Atonement. And when the sacrificial lamb should have been sacrificed unto God for their sins. So now we start in verse 17. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and they sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto the days of uh, unto that day had not, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. Now, this verse seems to confirm that since the days of Jeshua, the children of Israel, Israel had stopped celebrating this aspect of the Feast of Tabernacles. Jeshua Remember, Jeshua was one of the leaders that was with Zerubbabel about 75 years ago, and they observed the Feast of Tabernacles. 
Well, now, since those days, it seems like this aspect, the putting together of the, make, the making the booths and dwelling in them faded away. Maybe that got, got bored. Maybe they didn't like, you know, making booths and living in booths for seven days. And they said, ah, forget that. We're not going to do that. So we don't know what happened, but they, they stopped doing it. It would be as if you found in your family tradition that a hundred years ago, your children in your family would sleep under the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. But now it's a hundred years later and your family hasn't done it for many, many years. It doesn't mean that they stop celebrating Christmas, but that they stop celebrating it as they did a hundred years ago. So maybe they did celebrate, maybe they did for a while celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, but they just didn't dwell in the tabernacles because it was maybe they figured it was too much of a bother. I mean, I got a nice home here. Why do I need to go build a booth out here and live in a booth for seven days? So uh, we don't know why, but they did stop living, uh, dwelling in those booths. Now, verse 18, also day by day from the first day, uh, me meaning the first day of the celebration, which should have been the 15th of the seventh month, the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. Now, we're going to read Deuteronomy verse thir chapter 31 verses 10 to 13 because this is where it originated from. All right. So <clears throat> Deuteronomy 31 Verse 10 says, and Moses commanded them saying, at the end of every seven years in the solemnity of the year of release, in what? In the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles, verse 11, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, you shall do what? You shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord our God as long as you live in the land, whither you go over Jordan to possess it. So here, every seventh year at the Feast of Tabernacles, the law of Moses was to be read during the seven days of the feast. Not every year, but only on the seventh year. It was not known if this was the seventh year or if Ezra was making a special reading and maybe it would continue year by year. We don't know. But we do know that back in, in Moses, God told Moses, you observe the, the, the uh, Feast of Tabernacles every year. But every seventh year, I want the law of Moses to be read during the Feast of Tabernacles. And now here they're doing it. But again, they haven't done it for so long. They just started doing it now. And it says on the eighth day. Now, according to Numbers chapter 29 and verse 35, the eighth day was considered to be a solemn assembly. Now, Numbers 29 is all about the Feast of Tabernacles. If you want to learn more about the Feast of Tabernacles, read Numbers chapter 29. So it says here, 
Verse 18, also day by day from the first day to the last, he read in the law, he read in the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast of uh, seven days. And what on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. Now, as we can see from this whole eighth chapter of Nehemiah, that the law of Moses was made their guide for life. We see through the whole chapter of uh, eighth chapter of Nehemiah, everything centered around the law of Moses, the word of God. The month started out with the reading of the law uh, to the people on the first day, on the second day of the month, uh, the leaders of Israel wanted further instruction in the law of God. And now from the 15th to the 22nd of the month, during the Feast of Tabernacles, the law was read every day to the people. This month, the people had great exposure to the law of Moses. They heard most, if not all, of what God expected from them and the promises if they continued in his law. So here, these people came together and for the seventh month of, of uh, their, of this year, of that year, everything was about the law of Moses. They heard it on the first day. And they heard it on the second day and they got instruction also on the seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles. So they were getting a good dose of the law of Moses and they needed to keep it up. Now, in the next two chapters of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and chapter 10, we will see the people com committing themselves to God and to keep this law. So in chapter 8, they heard the law. Basically, it's the hearing of the law, getting, getting introduced to the law of God. And then verses nine, uh, chapters 9 and 10, it's where they, uh, where they begin to give themselves to the law of God. All right? So we're going to continue on in chapter 9 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.